Victoria's Secret is a company that was at the top and actually was on the verge of bankruptcy to finally recover. Not only that, but it has a dark side. It had connections with even Jeffrey Epstein, who was accused of child trafficking and other things. In this video, we will see its business model, its decline, and how it has managed to recover in recent years. Victoria's Secret was born in 1977 as a small clothing company. Its founder, Roy Raymond, was looking at the different lingerie stores, and they were not very attractive. And he felt very uncomfortable in the stores. He saw a serious problem as a man. He felt uncomfortable shopping for lingerie. What did he come up with? A store where you felt comfortable going to shop, that you could ask questions and not look like a pervert, with pretty interesting lingerie, a little more on the sexy side, and it worked very well. He had six stores and was turning over $4 million a year. In one of these moments, he ended up selling the company Roy to L Brands, and it must be said that Roy did not have a very good time. Not only because the company he sold then built an empire, but he also had personal problems and unhappily ended up taking his own life by throwing himself off a bridge in San Francisco. In the hands of L Brands, what they did was to get a lot of inspiration from European fashion, bring it to the United States, keep expanding, doing marketing. It is true that they did a marketing that at that time stigmatized a bit what was the figure of women in their ads, perfect women, perfect bodies, and it worked very well. They started selling a lot of lingerie and opening several stores, but what really brought Victoria's Secret to fame was their Los Angeles fashion show. This was an annual runway show that brought together models of the likes of Kendall Jenner or Adriana Lima wearing the brand's outfits. It cost millions to carry out these shows, but year after year they broke audience records. But from 2015 to 2016 sales began to drop and a few scandals began to appear that directly affected the business. In 2016, for example, Sharon Jester, the CEO, suddenly left the company. Victoria's Secret was not realizing that a huge shift in consumer taste was taking place. Women began to prefer brands that showed more realistic bodies and more inclusive designs. The new intimate apparel fashions were lightweight, comfortable garments. At this time, there was also a rise in the feminist movement, and everything that Victoria's Secrets had built was seen as perverse and against women, and they were not adapting. To try to fix the situation, Victoria's Secret began to resort to large discounts to attract customers, but it is just at that moment where it unleashes one of the biggest controversies in the history of the company. Ed Razak, the marketing director, made a statement to Vogue magazine that he would never hire a plus-size model or a trans model for his runway. At the time, it caused an explosion in social networks, and in the end, they ended up apologizing. Victoria's Secret and Ed Razak left the position. Not only that, but his show ended up being canceled. And it doesn't end there. In July 2019, Jeffrey Epstein, a former friend of the owner of Victoria's Secrets, was arrested. Epstein was a millionaire with very powerful friendships in the United States. He was accused of pedophilia and organizing with his wife a network of prostitution of minors for influential people. He was charged with child sex trafficking, child prostitution, and child sexual abuse. Epstein had been a good friend of Wexner owner of Victoria Surrettes. For many years, he had been in charge of managing his personal fortune. He even wanted to take part in the Victoria's secret model selection process. And although he ultimately failed, some of the victims said he had used his connections to the lingerie brand to blackmail them. According to the official version, Epstein would end up committing suicide a few weeks after his arrest, and the whole truth about the case was never known. But the worst came in 2020, when some models denounced former marketing executive Ed Razak for abusing his position of power to abuse them. This sexual harassment complaint referred to the 2018 catwalks. And although some time had already passed, the controversy returned again to the social networks. With its reputation in tatters and sales dwindling, many experts predicted that the brand would soon go bankrupt. Wexner announced it would sell Victoria's Secret to a fund called Sycamore Partners. But along came the pandemic and the sale was canceled. Then they have to end up closing all the Victoria's Secret stores because it wasn't sustainable. And they take advantage of this moment, which is where the interesting part comes. The first thing they did was separate Victoria's Secret from the L Brands brand. Basically in the stock market before you saw L Brands as a single company and a group of companies underneath. And now they have separated everything and now you can find the company Victoria's Secret directly loose. Not only that, but they conducted a $250 million share buyback, basically to have more control over the decisions they were going to make. They introduced a new CEO on November 25, 2020 named Martin Walters, 
and they also put in place a cost-cutting policy, such as they permanently closed 250 stores, they suspended dividend payments to investors, they lowered management pay by 20%, extended the supplier payment period, renegotiated lease terms, and established a new pay-for-performance system in their stores. They also repositioned the brand. They expanded their catalog with products more in line with new tastes, not so much provocative lingerie but more comfortable clothing. They also changed the stores, lowering the music with wood colors and whites and above all without photos of sexualized models. I in 2020 the brand began to recover driven by more online sales. Their recovery plan was starting to work and Victoria's Secret seemed to raise its head. In 2021 they continued with this strategy and incorporated women to the Victoria's Secret team. Not the team at the company level, but as ambassadors of the brand, who really were women with other kind of values, the company increased its sales by 25% in 2021. It also closed the year with net income of $646 million, compared to a net loss of $72 million in 2020.